a phenomenal attack here from Klaus. One is going down. Wait, he's oh. it's not invisible. The fox is taking down the elephants. It's the final stage of the Clash of Clans World's warm up between the top eight teams in the world competing. Let's check out Navi and Stars. The that we've got here, and we're gonna bring in this a would... Zapquake Lolo. Sign me up, Stars. I, I, this is perfect. This is perfect for my forward and fireball. If I hit this town hall, everything is gone. Uh, yes, it is a slow attack, but oh my goodness, look at the core of this base as we're seeing lightning spells being used right away. But imagine a war and fireball hitting that town hall. Bye bye to so much stuff in the middle. Woo. Yeah, that would be really cool to see the fireball hit all of those <laughs> defenses in the middle of the base. However, he's already got his king and the queen on the north hand side. Warden's coming in with the Lalo on the left, Stone Slammer on the south, the Royal Champion on the right. He's approaching this base from all sides, which is going to actually help force these loons in towards the middle of the base because the heroes on the north cleared out all of those defenses. Now, here goes the loons into the heart oh. of this base. There is an invisibility spell tower, but because he's cleared out all oh of my. the defenses from the ring, uh, everything's just meeting in the middle holy. to get the triple done. What? Is he going to be under a minute? Wait a second. Look at that. He's at <gasps> 50, 61 seconds. Stars. Are you serious? This attack from Stars helped Navi advance to the second round along with Tribe Gaming, Early Attacks, and Synchronic. But Navi unfortunately was sent to the lower bracket. So let's now jump into Navi versus VM Legacy with Klaus. Whoa, okay. So they are, look at this. They are giving Navi this. So this base design is going to be all five bases. Usually that's how what pro teams do is they don't just give different types of bases throughout the match. They usually stick with the same base throughout, or not the same exact base, but the same style of base where the invises are in the core here to cover every single one of the buildings. And I just think VM Legacy is just crossing the fingers and hoping that they could just mess one of Navi's attacks up. Yeah, now he does have a load of Zapquakes that are coming into the Town Hall compartment. Now, he brought in a lot of them. The main reason for this is to get both of the scatter shots down as well as the Infernos and everything that is nearby. And the Log Launcher can go in and look at those logs already clearing off wow. over half of the health from that Town Hall before uh the Log Launcher even pops open. There will be some troops in there which will be able to finish that off. And all he has to do is get those Super Barbarians around the outside of this base to clear Ooh. it up one minute into the attack and we oh have only 10 Klaus. buildings remaining he <laughs> has to make sure that the royal champion goes back to get the eagle artillery in the middle but what a phenomenal attack here from klaus wow klaus coming in and absolutely smashing that base with so many lightning spells in a 58 seconds but take a look at the right side of the screen, where with a three star here, stars will tie this war up exactly perfect, perfect. And the time could be a complete draw. Wait a second, is this gonna be too slow here for stars? Oh no, a tornado oh. trap! That literally could be the difference maker in this match. Ninja's tornado trap perfectly is slowing his heroes down. Is that enough time as the white? No, it's tied! Oh no! Guys, my goodness! I, what do we do? It's 100% tied! And when teams are 100% tied after a match, they will go to a sudden 1v1 friendly challenge where we have Ninja going up against Stars to see who can advance. Root Riders, Valkyries, Warded, and they're going straight across into the monolith. And now time is going to be a huge factor if they both triple. Yeah, he's got that Warn ability nice and early. Saving the damage from the Monolith and these Multi-Infernos. Double Rage in here to make sure all of his Root Riders are doing as much damage as possible. Now he's got the Overgrow spell on the Town Hall and the Double Scatter Shot. That means the Eagle Artillery is going to stay up because we've seen the Overgrow spell on the... Uh, Eagle Artillery in previous attacks, but this one's going to be raining hard on his Root Riders. 
Yeah, as that overgrowth is going to be wearing off pretty soon. Pekka's coming through the top side. Queen's continue her way through. There's the king ability. Now trying to help grab the town hall as he did freeze it. As Rude Riders are coming back. As he's just approaching the 60 second mark here. Freezes the backside. Multi archer tower. Royal champion's making his way through with that town hall now going down. Yes, Queen's around the outside. We are just oh. over the one minute mark. One minute, like 10, oh. 11 seconds from Nin. Right here is now Stars is in. And Stars was coming in here with the Queen charge. Not a Queen charge. Obviously, that would be way too slow as the balloon's coming down. As we had a baby dragon to the bottom side. Blimp is going to cut across to that town hall as the Queen is going to make her way into the multis. And Water Billy went off, but he did not clip that Blimp to the town hall, but it's okay as it still makes its way there. Yeah, I did have that miss the blimp under that warden ability, but no traps pop up. That was very, very lucky. The invisibility spell tower going off, but it doesn't make a difference. Town hall is down. The loons on the north hand side as they're pathing in towards the middle of the base now. Monolith is picking them off one by one. King on the right hand side, look at the size of him. He's going through, getting those last few buildings on the right hand side down. This multi inferno is going to do a lot of damage though, alongside that scatter shot on the south hand side. Yeah, with that king that has his way right on through that eagle artillery, the balloons path their way to the scatter shot. But with the time that it was indeed, the mini is trying to fly his way through, trying to get it done. And about a minute with 20 or so in this attack. And Ninja was at about 70 seconds, a minute and 10. And we'll confirm the times in just a second to see who indeed has won this match due to the 1v1 match. And with that, Navi has been eliminated and VM Legacy has advanced to take on Tribe Gaming, which they ended up perfecting and advancing to the grand finals right now. Grand finals has kicked off and Ninja is in with the Root Riders and Valkyries going across this base with the town hall off to the left and the queen can actually step her way to the town hall if he has a wall break but he actually doesn't but there is one little wall open to which can allow the queen to go in but it looks like some root riders are kind of actually pathing in different directions here yeah the water was like split up in between like should i go left right left right and he was always bouncing between those different groups but the rage in the core on defense is hitting hard versus those root riders there's a lot of damage on them. The monolith deals a lot of damage as well behind the tunnel. That's why he's getting frozen up. The queen is not walking into oh. that tunnel compartment. And this is spelling bad news for a ninja. Oh, that is really bad. If that queen was supposed to make his, her way to the town hall, and that's where you could have used the funneling troop to help get her to go there. But the queen... Okay, she comes back. There's the rage. She should be able to secure the town hall. No! No, 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 this can't be a one. This cannot be a one to start off the very first attack of the grand finals. He sends a barbarian to go in with the super barb. Oh, no, wait a second. The RC ability's also been forced. No, no. Oh, no, does history repeat? We had already a huge defense in their first match, and Synchronic was just able to play it safe, sending VM Legacy down to the lower bracket. And it seems like it's going to be the same story again. This time, it's Ninja falling short with the one star. The troops were just splitting up too much. The warden could not decide which group to follow. The queen did not go for the town hall. And this messed up the entire attack. But it's a complete different approach, right? I think mm -hmm. it's a lot of super barbarians and less root riders. Yeah, with 20 super barbs here as the witches are down. Root Riders and the Log Launcher is specifically going to go into the core to help try to activate the invisibility spells. But remember, uh, oh, he's dropping some Earthquakes to help open the walls even quicker so that the Logs can kind of skip to the other side, activating the other invisibility spell. But he needs to pass his way into the core. He does have one Root Rider coming there, and there's the King coming in late to help clear the whole core. But that is such a smart, smart thing with the Epic Gauntlet equipment. The King and the splash damage is just so good versus those stacked up defense in the core. The second Invis Tower is already triggered. And this attack is just genius. An incredible answer to this setup of base, which has done so good in the, in the past. And the core should go down, at least the majority of it. Some healers are switching to the core. The Fuck King it, yeah. is tanking as well. There's another rage happening for the King. Remember, he's coming back now with Phoenix 
take down hopefully some more defenses and wait a second the troops are slowly dying out yeah the troops going down but he still can lose his way through the queen unfortunately stepped through into a wall had to beat through it and the warden is getting hit by the eagle which is an, definitely an awkward angle where the eagle is to the outside of his base but he now is working through it taking it down does still have the raw champion ability to skip across but this is racking up some time granted their opponent did get a one star so this is going to get a three star here dropping a freeze onto the ground expo road champion jumping and it is indeed a triple here for socratic simon getting it done giving them a two star lead here so if a fail does come in which it could be a bad fail depending on the base designs of vm legacy if they're continuing to be like that tunnel in the core could also be a one star you never know something could go horribly wrong for socratic but fluxy coming in with the root riders as well but he is taking that overgrowth that we've been seeing so many times here and that's an interesting setup of base here again with the rage tower we have seen a lot of poison towers as well but this is the rage tower setup we, he's using the overgrowth spell that's an interesting use really early on redirecting most of his troops now he has an entire split. Some troops are at the top side, some at the bottom, and the queen is walking all the way back into the base around the bottom compartment. Yeah, she can make her way towards that ricochet cannon, but had just dealt with the enemy royal champion. The ice golems are there, which they are they are getting distracted on a root rider. But this king needs to path his way back to the core as he sends in a freeze to the town hall. And the king still got his ability, luckily, but unfortunately, he can't reach that Mylith with the king. The warden is going to die off. Now. Oh, that's the royal champion there that's next to the Mylith, taking it down with her ability. Yeah, the Hog Riders with the haste vial of that royal champion are just going through the backhand like it's nothing. The king ability takes on the outside buildings, and that is going to be the three star. It always looks so close when the defenses are coming back from the overgrowth spell and like waking up again and then suddenly everything disappears so really nicely done by flaxy getting the three star which they needed to somehow have the chance of coming back with a miracle defense but it's now back to synchronic on the other side okay it's not the double invisibility spell for vm legacy that uh, aaron's running is the double poison spell towers as it is indeed root riders and valkyries with that queen to the bottom king's gonna path his way into this multi-arch tower as he finds a tesla farm very nice use of a skeleton spell out in front but sacronic is really liking to use the jump spell instead of the overgrowth that we've seen from teams like tribe and others in an attack like this as we are seeing the king ability getting used as this queen's going to continue her way to the left as the warden internal tome is protecting everything yeah it's interesting as well base choice because this was a base which synchronic already three star if i remember correctly in the past with exactly this approach i think with the last uh, approach versus this base it was that the king lured out the clan castle away earlier and then he delayed the root riders but this time around he is starting with the root riders way earlier which means the king gets way further into the core and even takes out the town hall with the phoenix yeah, that king got a fantastic value as super minions coming out of that siege barracks royal champion still going through and look at that pekka that is also going to help take out that mortar moving on through getting distracting and tanking that ground expo to protect the royal champion drops a final handful of freezes and we got ourselves a three star continuing to bring the three stars in for a synchronic great attack here general x and now gonna be harder and harder for v and legacy as there's less attacks for synchronic to mess up to try to give the make a comeback possible for vm legacy i don't even i i feel like this is a bold statement i don't know i feel like maybe anyone watching here that if you're watching this tournament here that there's almost like more one stars now at the title 16 here because they're trying to be quick with it then we almost saw all combined at 15 i mean in terms of tournaments it's wild the amount of them that we're seeing but dark star is coming with 38 balloons here that is going to be a huge loon parade for sure but it's only one hound is that going to be enough to tank for those loons he has one bad spell as well which typically is getting used to like tank an elephant for example 
Royal Champions getting turned invisible to get even more value because those small giant front towers in the core, he wants to take those out for sure. With that RC ability going off and the shield skipping across, it does actually remove one sweeper, which was to the bottom side and using some balloons and following behind it, Bath Bell to help try to go for that air defense as the warden is down with the balloons and the blimp to fly to that town hall as the RC is going to go down to the defensive ice golem, but hopefully there's no tornado trap near this town hall and the yetis are safe taking that town hall down. Second Sour is already in, but there is more loons coming in as well. The Hound tanking the back end, the Queen taking down the Expo. And it seems like there is just so many loons left alive. It is mind-blowing, controlling all of those at the same time. And Dark Sour getting it done with another three-star for his team. And it seems like, I, I don't know how, but Beam Legacy always find this one attack, which they're having early into the match, struggling versus the base of the Chronic. And then it's just so hard to come back from that. It just seems like Sychronic has the number of VM Legacy. It was Sychronic that sent them down to the lower bracket, and they're looking to send them down again in the grand final. We have the next attack in, and Einstein is as well going in with the Root Riders, so they're not switching things up overall. They're just going in with the Mads Root Riders. And the question now is, where is he coming in from? Is he going from the far side with a lock launcher, or is he going to do something different to start things off? It's going to be the lightnings and not something, uh, well, more common, I guess, with the jump approach, which they have done otherwise. Yeah, but he does have a log launcher selected at the moment, unless he decides to switch that up. His root riders are down with the Valks to move into the enemy queen. And he does indeed decide to stay with the log launcher. Why? Look where the town hall is, and look what's next to it. The invisibility spell tower. If that was probably a poison spell, if that was a rage, he probably would not go with the log launcher and go with the siege barracks. But because the log launcher and the logs can hit the buildings way out in front, causing the invisibility spell to get activated, then it will wear off, and then you can help take it down later. Yeah, that was a really nice use case. Um for the lock launch and making sure that the spell tower is not having as much impact. The queen is still walking around this far right side with not that much damage there. She's having just a great time of taking down defenses left and right without even having to worry about her own life. And then we have the root riders pushing through the core. The king is taking down the entire far left side. The healers are getting spawned for the queen. And it seems like this base is done with the royal champion being on the back end as well. No way this base is going to defend after that value. Einstein taking it down. Brilliant attack here and has plenty of time remaining. And I, I'm still thinking back to a moment that Coco brought up of, you know, we used to talk about Lalo attacks being, well, you got to get the Lalo down with about a minute and a half left. The attack's already over by then like you don't even have to worry like it's going down so quick Ariam's turn to try to continue with three stars can he do it with the zap Roo riders as it starts off grabbing some nice value including the defensive rage and there's also another defensive rage on the other side by that town hall as the Roo riders are going to look to kind of cut through the corner from the top side as the queen is going to walk around the edge She's going to walk around not having that much damage on her. The ground expo maybe, but that's going to be quite late. We have the Seeds Burst on the far right side working with the Royal Champion coming in there as well. Some nice freezes to make sure that the damage in the core is not as critical. The Town Hall is not activated yet. Only activates once it takes some damage or hits 51% damage on the map. As he's continuing around, and there it is. Town Hall now is going to be fighting back. No warden ability anymore, so he's going to go with a freeze, but the king has that giant gauntlet, and he has made his way straight into the middle of this base, taking that town hall down with ease as he's got the queen continuing her way through to the left. The raw champion is getting through this monolith, and he's crushing right on through this backside. Yeah, what a crazy attack, getting the three star done versus this base completely overtaking the back end. The king has taken care of the entire core with this giant equipment. It is just massive how much damage he can provide. 
and this is going to be the next three star for area and for bm legacy increasing their score by another three stars but philip is in with the root riders versus this base and again the lightnings that is a combination which they have used now quite a bit and was really successful for them yeah, lightning spells are going to be used. Let's see. It's probably going to go for the ricochet cannon and the multi-target inferno. Maybe even the bomb tower. That could be some nice value to help set up a funnel potentially. As oh, he's got seven lightning. That could go. Technically, eagle. isn't that enough to go for the eagle? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking here. Yep. What is he going to go for? Yeah. Um, I would. Yeah. Okay. Eagle is down. Create the pathing, which is always key for the root riders since they're just attacking those defenses so you want to make sure that you're somewhat controlling them where they're going the queen is now supposed to walk all the way towards the town hall so she's getting wall break in there then to take down the town hall with the the rulers yeah the warden ability it looked kind of like the warden we're staying behind but the queen is supposed to get the town hall the king the core of the base the flame flinger interestingly enough to take down the far right inferno tower yeah with the freeze onto the mile if he's continuing his way in the core and the nice thing about using the lightning spells to take out the eagle artillery right away is you don't have to worry about those eagle shots raining fire down on your troops which does so much damage as the queen is going with a very nice freeze there just before the invisibility spell can get activated yeah town hall going down image tower is now getting triggered which is just way too late to have any impact but the core has slowly went down as well the back and royal champion though should be enough power to get this base out with the flame flinger still being able to open and release even more troops into that base yeah the rc luckily does have the spear fox going invisible hasting her way through the healers are actually flying across and they are going to get taken out here the raw champion is probably going to get taken out by this mile of down she goes the king's going to come back he does have the phoenix to come back to life the warren's trying his best to help keep this king up as a flame flinger is about to open up maybe with the yetis that are no super minions and the one problem of having super minions in here is there was really no other air troops other than healers but they stayed on the queen which means there's gonna be a lot of trash for these super minions oh no you just said it there is a lot of trash but wait ah. the, fo the fox is attacking the air defense if that one is going down Wait, he's, oh. it's not invisible. The fox is taking down the other fence. What? And this means that, wait, what, wait what? where did it go? What? Um, <laughs> this is still fine. This Are is you still fine. serious? <laughs> you see his reaction. He's like, what is going on? What? But he is making it work somehow. The fox on its own turning invisible and taking down the other fence was clutch for the Superman to survive. What was that? Like... Oh my, how did that happen? The odds of perfectly timed Spear Fox staying up, going invisible. I, I would love to see a replay. You know, that was wild. Taking out the air defense. That super minion had like no health. Cynthia is up with the hog riders. We got a skelly donut and... Oh, 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 it's, <laughs> I, I saw it. Did you see it? You, you see it? I think, I think everyone saw it. Yep, that's it. It's the giant arrow. Let's go, Cynthia. Okay, I'm ready. But there is no lightning this time and there is no invis tower to trigger early. This is okay, true. so this is true. I, I'm not sure if that's <laughs> the craziest value, but we will see. So far, this Kelly Donut for sure is looking amazing. You should be able to take down those key defenses he's looking for monolith going down as well flame finger great value but he has to worry about the expo and that's why he's sending in now his king to distract that just the mm. queen is working as well where's the king now coming in ah queen in for the defensive king and the town hall you pop that queen ability it will skip all the way across as rocket loons are going in, a healer is down. Hopefully he can try to help keep this queen up. Absolutely shredded right through that king, but doesn't have to worry about a clan castle. As ground skeletons, ooh, are gonna go to that flame flinger, and that queen is taking a lot of damage here. Turning her invisible. He has to be careful that the expo is not switching onto this flame finger, but so far looks good. The giant arrow is there, flying across, dealing already a little bit of damage for the back end. Oh yeah. Not that massive this time around. But well, I mean, there's no builder huts there, so they can't get repaired. 
so that Grand Warden Altar is almost down, which is going to be very nice, especially when you have the Hogs coming on through, and especially Warden Ability. Yeah, the Warden Ability with those Hogs together should be able to get some great value. The question now is, is he going to go into the Rage Tower right away, or is he going to stop off the Eagle? And it seems like, nope, he's going to split things up quite a bit. He's sending some Hogs from the bottom, some Hogs right into the Bomb Tower, he then used the Warden Ability early on to protect them, and Rage versus Rage, offense versus defense. And that RC can get through that single target really quickly because the Queen's Giant Arrow damaged it. So the RCs can now join in with the rest of these Hogs of the ability skips across and Cynthia delivers. Coming in with a three star and bringing the Hog Riders. Great attack here, Cynthia. But they know that all Socratic needs to get is a two star and they will be the champions. I love to still see the smile on Cynthia's face, getting it done. You, you still, no matter what situation it is, a three star is always still a great feeling. As now Mark is going in and all he's got to get is a two star for the win. But this is a base that could easily cause a one star. Yeah, but I think he's going in somewhat with a safe approach with the lock launcher. Uh, we have talked about that earlier that with the lock launcher, you have then obviously the less time on your side because you cannot bring something like a siege barracks, which right now is just so, so popular and strong. But the lock launcher is giving you the safety net of making sure that the invis towers are getting activated early on, have no chance of like messing things up, pathing wise and so on. And he's going to go with the same route again of actually sending the king then for the core and for the town hall. Yeah, look at that. The king is going to directly target the multi-target inferno as he can even rage up the core if he so chooses. Sneaky goblins go straight for the town hall and the town hall has been... Almost <laughs> take it down, not just yet. <laughs> he just needs the town hall. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, King. Just burn your ability. And boom, there you go. Synchronic has just won the Clash of Clans world warm up. Well done to you. And they're not stopping here. They're going for the thrice on this one. The King's being stuck in the train trap in the core. The Royal Champion with the Queen chasing for the last compartment. The King's getting turned invisible. <laughs> but I don't think that this is going to be the deciding factor because there is just too many troops alive. He has plenty of spells left, which he can use now in the last couple of defenses. And Synchronic, they're doing it in style with 15 stars. <laughs> and they have done it with a, a nice invis spell for the end. And it's a three-star. Mark gets it done. Synchronic is going to get the perfect war, and they are going to be crowned your champions. What a performance. What a bracket that they had to fight through. 